welcome. I'm Reverend Sue Browning. I am the minister who serves the Unitarian Universalists of the Chester River and the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship at Easton, and it is wonderful to be together today. At our core, Unitarian Universalism is a faith tradition that lives into our values of inclusion and equity. We are a faith tradition who finds the spiritual in the everyday, and today you're going to see us experiment with a different type of service, a different way to open our hearts and minds to one another. We hope if you have questions about Unitarian Universalism or if you have questions about either of our congregations that you will ask. Um, we, during the time of the pandemic, you can check us out on our websites, email us, or call but we want to really focus on the needs of connection, particularly during a time of pandemic. So we hope we'll hear from you if there are any questions in your heart. Our service today, as I said, is just a little bit different as we lift up the artists and the leaders on the, on the Eastern Shore who bring their gifts of creativity and their gifts of art and their experience with community art to our everyday lives. I am beyond excited about the various voices that you're going to hear from today. We've got a series of interviews and music and, and different ways of bringing all of this forth. And as with everything else, when you try something new, it might be a little rocky in spots. Some of the interview technology was new to me and, um, well, you'll see. We have a few places where we had to smooth over some glitches. Um, I am very grateful today to be sharing the role of leading the service with Sarah Poli. She's a member of the Easton Congregation and is one of our artists, and it's been a joy to work with Sarah and so many on this service. Uh, for those of you who are used to our services, our time for reflection um, and joys and sorrows, though we didn't have any joys and sorrows that were actually submitted this week, will be at the end of the service instead of in its usual place. So I invite you now to take a deep breath, to center yourself wherever you are, and come, let us worship together. Good morning, I'm Sarah Linda Poli. This morning we light the chalice with the words of Israel's unwill. Come into the circle of love and justice. Come into the community of mercy, holiness, and health. Come and you shall know peace and joy. something a little different. We all have had our hearts tugged in so many ways as we've looked at the issues of racism, as we've looked at the experiences over the last summer. 
And I know I was moved when I heard about some of the ways that the artists are helping us reframe and, and use their creativity to help ask interesting and difficult questions. So we've created a worship service to look at the issues a little differently today. Um, we're going to talk about the Artists for Justice who began in Easton and have had their exhibit moving around. And we're going to, um, later in the service, talk to some folks from Kent County that have been involved in the Tapestry Weaving Pro Project and Black Lives Mural. So we begin today with artist Nancy Tankersley. And um, Nancy, could you just tell us a little bit about how the portrait project began and um, what your experience has been there? Sure. Um, it all began on uh, Memorial Day when there was an impromptu vigil on, on Marlboro Avenue uh, for George Floyd. And uh, I was standing there in the, uh, the largely white crowd. Um, it was mixed, but there were, you know, mostly white people who had made signs and we were all standing there and um, people were driving up and down reading the signs and honking their horns. And there was this one young woman in particular who would drive and then she'd stop and she'd read a sign and she'd roll down her window and she'd go, oh my God, oh my God, thank you, thank you so much. And the feeling that I got from seeing her was a surprise that she was so surprised and shame that she was so surprised. Um, it made me feel that um, we'd been silent too long, that we were not activists the way we needed to be um, in, in the movement or in recognizing the, you know, the injustice that was going on. So anyhow, I thought, what can I do? I thought I'm an artist. How can I use my art, uh, not to my own advantage, but to further the cause? And I came up with the idea of the uh, portrait project where we would paint uh, victims of uh, racial injustice. And uh, I started, you know, doubt started creeping in. And I started thinking, oh, I'm going to make a lot of enemies. I can't do this. And I thought I've got to do it. And I went home and I immediately um, started emailing. First, I emailed my, uh, my students. And uh, then I started emailing some artist friends that lived in the, uh, the downtown area and quickly uh, got responses. People were eager, just eager to do something. And then we started, uh, I actually, uh, somebody pointed me to a list of uh, killings. Uh, it actually was police uh, brutality, but, um, and I encourage people to go through the list and find somebody they wanted to paint, do a little research and then get back to me. But it quickly expanded beyond poli police brutality because there are just so many instances of um, injustices, starting with uh, Emmett Till, you know, way back, uh, it, it jump-started the civil rights movement, the killing of Emmett Till. Uh, and then it went on and uh, there are just, so many, uh, so many victims. So anyhow, people would do the research and then they'd get back to me and tell me who they wanted to paint and then they painted them. And uh, I was overwhelmed by the response, really. So I'm curious, it sounds like it happened very quickly. It did. From, from it, the place of your heart to the place of action. Could you talk a little bit about I I knew... to action. Yeah. Well, I, I knew myself and I knew that if I didn't act quickly, it would just be another good idea put on the shelf. And I also kind of knew that if I got involved too much with um, organized groups, that it would be delayed and maybe put on the shelf. Uh, there was some talk of uh, trying to have it. I, I wanted to have it on the fence at my, uh, my studio on Aurora. Um, for two reasons, for safety, because we didn't want to have it inside um, during the pandemic. And then because it is uh, located in a place that's very close to um, historically black neighborhood. Mary Ford came up with uh, the title Portraits of Black Lives Lost, showing their faces, telling their stories. 
and it seemed to be perfect. It, it fit everything. And then we just um, did, a, did some posters, uh, sent out some press releases, and the response of the press was overwhelming, really. I was just amazed at how quickly the story was picked up. Uh, I was interviewed by Channel 47 in Salisbury. The Spy ran several articles. The Star Dem, Dem ran some articles and actually sent out a reporter. Um, it was it was it was amazing to me. <laughs> After having been a gallery owner and har having a hard time getting the word out about gallery shows, this this show really took off, and uh, it was great. So I'd like to ask our, some of the other artists. We've got Sarah Poli, who's a member of the East End Congregation, and Lori Yates. Sarah, how, what's, your, what's been your experience of being involved? What did it feel like to be invited to do this? Um, I've been for a long time. I'm, I guess I spend a lot of time thinking about how I can use my art and my gifts to help different organizations and different movements or whatever. And so I, you know, I loved the idea right away. I mean, I think that it gave me a chance to look deeper into something, into a, a person's life. Um, I, and to take another step too. I mean, I've done things in the past, given my work to different organizations for um, and they, you know, resell it to help the organizations and things like that. But this felt like a deeper step, um, a, a more personal step. And I like that a lot. So I guess that's pretty much the way I felt. Um, I've, I've loved it all along now. I mean, I think it's great. I'm really glad that we're doing it. And who is the um, victim that you painted? George Floyd. And, and I, I was able to look into his life and I, I collected a whole lot of photos from the internet of him in different ways. And most of them, he looked kind of severe. Um, I never could find a painting that I felt was like maybe his happier side or his more, um, but I took all the ones that I found and I kind of tried to put them all together into, you know, what, what I could of him um and and while i was doing that i just felt like i got to know him on some level and i think you know you get into a person's head a little bit when you're thinking about them so much like that so that was good too and and Lori, i know you've been a part of the exhibit and i had a chance to be with you the exhibit for folks it was in easton it's um now being shown down in cambridge Lori, what's your what's been your experience and your evolution as this project has moved forward from being invited to the later showing? Well, when I received that email from Nancy as one of her students, I couldn't respond fast enough. <laughs> I was beyond eager to take part. I felt like, well, Nancy's a brilliant artist anyway but it was such a brilliant idea and coming out of what we were all watching happening um, in the larger picture uh, in our country um, it, it, it just felt like an opening and an opportunity to take an action um, that as artists uh, we could take and uh, as, as a prior portrait artist for a long time it um, I just knew that um, that was something that I could really do, something really solid that, you know, I could take part in this and make it good. And, uh, and then it had a more personal meaning because I knew immediately who I wanted to paint. Um, I painted Anton Black, who uh, is sadly a Black life lost here on the Eastern Shore in Greensboro. And I had a connection in a way because I mentor his niece. And so when his death occurred in fall of 2018, I knew about it right away. You know, it wasn't, I didn't hear on the news, I heard it from my mentee. And so, uh, you know, I had a, a heart connection to her about it and saw 
you know, something of what that family went through. I want to say a small, I saw a small window um, into what they uh, were going through and, and continue to go through um, because of his loss. So that was my connection and I'm, I am still very, very grateful to be one of the artists who took part in this. So I know some of the experience I've had um, of the art exhibit was to look at it in its totality. If you go down to Cambridge and you see the art exhibit, uh, going to the exhibit last week and it's hung right at eye level and the pictures are not huge. The art is giving us a chance to see humanity and it's an impactful piece for the artists. So Nancy, is there any final sense just briefly as to what you've experienced as um, the art has now started to move around the Eastern Shore? Um, any new artists, other ways that, that this is moving yeah. forward? Yeah, yeah, it's been really great. Um, you know, one of the, there's always naysayers, and of course one of the critiques of our first exhibit is that um, we had no uh, artists of color. And uh, that, that is true, because um, frankly, in my experience, I haven't had uh, many artists of color come through my studio. And, uh, and, and, and also in another way, this was about us learning learning about the movement and the, the pain that's out there. But now it was time to take the next step. So we put out, put it out that uh, on Facebook, we started a Facebook page and we put it out that we were looking for artists of color to join us. And uh, we, we did get, um, I think I may be wrong, the numbers, we, we got a wonderful Latina artist and uh, at least a uh, five artists uh, who are identified as black um, from the Eastern Shore. I also wanted to limit it to the Eastern Shore because um, there are so many artists out there who would like to become part of it and we want this to grow kind of slowly and organically. So anyhow, they, these new artists have uh, added a wonderful dimension uh, to the show and um, uh, are able to bring their own experience to it which um, makes it even more more meaningful. And uh, I, I see, unfortunately, you know, there are countless victims out there. So I see the show growing. And I also hope this becomes a bridge. I've already um, had some communications that I wouldn't ordinarily have had with um, artists of color. And, and I look forward to being able to actually get to know them uh, in person when, when we're all not meeting on Zoom <laughs> yeah. or virtually. So. Well, that's our introduction as we start looking at these artists. And we are now going to have a chance to see some of this artwork. You'll see it put to music now in just a moment. So thank you, ladies, for that start to our service.
we're privileged today to also have some representatives from Kent County that have been involved in community art. And I'm going to ask John and Mariah to each introduce themselves and tell you about two exciting projects that have been going on there or that are using art to bring the communities together. And John, I'd ask you to start, please. Great. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me with you today um, to talk about this. Uh, um, my name is John Schratweiser. I'm the director of the Kent Cultural Alliance, uh, formerly known as the Kent County Arts Council here in Chestertown. Um, we've been involved in a project the last couple of months called Tapestry for Change. Uh, and it has been sort of a coalition of arts councils uh, around, the, around the Eastern Shore that have come together to build on um, a, a community weaving project. Um, so partner, the project is taking place in um, Kent County, Queen Anne's, Talbot, Dorchester, and Caroline, um, and was started in conjunction with the Social Action Committee for Racial Justice. What we did was we actually built out um, just five four foot by six foot wooden frames um, and we strung them up, um, providing the warp for our weft, uh, for those of you who know the weaving terms. Um, and each county then had um, one or two events where people could come together and um, add a piece of fabric uh, one way or another to these frames. So ours was done in conjunction with a Black Lives Matter um, rally that was happening in Fountain Park in Chestertown uh, with the Social Action Committee. And we invited people to come and bring their own fabric to weave in a piece of their own history or to come and take a piece of fabric that we had cut up. Um, and you know, you come up with some pretty exciting, beautiful, colorful designs. And as this is happening in places like Easton and Centerville and Dorchester, Cambridge, um, more and more people are participating in uh, a, a fairly you know, simple but far-reaching project. Um, it's a great way to express sort of how we as community members um, and residents of these various counties can actually come across differences and come across borders to, um, to come together in something. The, the, the idea of a community art project is to, is to bring people together through art um, and use that art as an entryway to uh, whatever the social or civic issue might be um, that we're trying to address. So this was a really neat opportunity for us to, to bring a lot of people together um, across cultures, across boundaries uh, from the counties uh, and get people involved in a conversation. Thank you. And Mariah, there's been a lot of attention on the Black Lives Matter mural that is literally painted in Chestertown. Could you tell us a little bit about that project, how it came about and, and where it stands right now? Sure thing. Um, hi, I'm Mariah Wood and I'm the executive director of Chestertown River Arts and I'm also one of three organizers of the Chestertown street murals that have been uh, really front and center in the, the public imagination this summer here in Chestertown. Um, uh, Wanda Boyer and Arlene Lee and I have been working together to um, make these murals happen. We, we kind of had the idea back in June and um, to be honest, we didn't expect or, or um, really understand maybe how ripe the moment was here in Chestertown for this kind of a public art project that also um, really taps into longstanding issues in the country, but also you know, very immediately here in Chestertown. And so um, it's been it's been a period of a lot of um, discussion and growth and um, and really interesting learning for a lot of people here. So um, we just last weekend painted the first mural, which is on High Street in Chestertown, and it says Black Lives Matter. And then underneath that, it says Chestertown unites against racism, which is um, those two phrases, along with the phrase we can't breathe, which is going to be on the other mural on College Avenue that we're painting this weekend. Um, those are all have, have been adopted by the town as um, kind of official town speech. So they are 
representing principles and ideals that the town has embraced and will continue to embrace in other ways as well. Um, but the, for me, the most important part of this project, um, similar to what John said about the weaving project, is the fact that people have come together from the community um, across all kinds of, of lines, um, racial lines, age, you know, different segments of the community that might not intersect in other ways have, have really become um, unified around the, the desire and the need and excitement over these murals. So it's been, um, it's been really exciting. And I think, you know, looking back, it will, it will, we will recognize that it's a historical moment of significance for the town. Right now, we're all kind of in the moment and we're, right. and we're feeling right. it here and now, but, uh, and, and it's hard to kind of relate to how, how much that's going to mean, you know, 10 or 20 or, you know, however many years hence when people look back at the long breadth of Chestertown's history from, you know, the founding in the 1700s, um, this will be one of those moments and, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. And I think that, um, I think Chestertown can be really proud to be meeting this moment with the kind of openness that they are. Well, thank you both. I just want to ask you to, to briefly also just mention what it is about art. How is art playing a part in the transformation that might be different than other things. So, so Mariah, maybe you could just briefly share um, that and then we'll finish up with John. Yeah, well, um, you know, a mural is art and that um, there are lots of, lots of ideas about the kind of the meaning and the purpose of art. But for me, um, it is a way for people to both express and evoke emotions that that are both personal and individual and also universal. And so for a piece of sort of community created public art like these murals, um, they, they, they bring um, people together in ways that may not happen otherwise. And uh, we recognize in each other the need for the murals and the need to create them together. Um, and that opens something up that, that it doesn't get opened up in other ways. Um, you know, there's been a lot of, of very good conversation all summer about whether the murals mean something. Do they accomplish anything? Are they kind of a hollow gesture? And I, I will be honest and say that at the beginning, I had some of those questions too when we first started talking about the idea. I mean, I, I liked it, but I wasn't sure it was um, it was going to lead to anything substantive. Um, but but it has, and and so I think that's the demonstration of the work that art does in real lives. Thank you, John. Uh, Mariah said, you know, express and evoke. I think that's just incredible um, place that art plays. Anything you'd like to add to that as you think about um, where art fits in the transformation? Yeah, um, that's a hard statement to follow, Mariah. Well done. <laughs> um, I totally agree. Um, I, I, I have always looked at art, I shouldn't say I've always, as I've grown older and spent more time uh, with artists and arts organizations, I have come to understand the role of art as a tool um, or a pathway rather than an end product. Um, we are very much aware of sort of the Western civilization style of, you know, art is the concert on the stage or the painting on the wall. And in fact, it goes far beyond that. I mean, those pieces are great and art for art's sake is its own thing. But art for, um, for action, art as a tool, art as a pathway to a final end product that is greater than the art and greater than the art makers uh, is where I keep my focus. Um, it's the thing that keeps me attached to wanting to do more art. Thank you so much. And we now have a chance to see at least a few photos 
from the work that's being done up in Kent County. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to thank all of the artists who have been a part of sharing their stories with us today. I wish I could have invited every artist who had painted a portrait or who had woven a part of the tapestry or who had put some blue tape on the line for the mural in to help us with the service today. I think one of the things this project has done, one of the things that these projects have done is to help us imagine how it is we are called to co-create the world. We are called to try to live into that vision of inclusion and equity. We know we want that vision. We want a world where diversity is valued. We want a world where everyone is part of an ever widening circle. We know we have that vision out there, and yet it is hard to get there. Racism harms us all. We start from where we are, and often we look ahead, and there is just no tidy roadmap to get to the next step. And that's where I can see that art is helping us. It's helping refresh our imaginations, to see paths through and creative paths to relationship and connection that we had not even imagined. So for all the artists are, that are out there, all that have helped with this work, all the many ways that leadership has pulled this together, thank you. Thank you for inviting us all. Thank you for inviting us, the community, into this work with you, into this work of co-creation. And thank you for modeling courage. Because no matter how much talent we have, no matter how much God-given skill we have, it takes courage to take that next step, to put it out there. So thank you. At the last um, Saturday night in Cambridge, um, I had a chance to see the full exhibit. Um, the full title is Portraits of Black Lives Lost, Showing Their Faces, Telling Their Stories. And at the Dorchester Center for the Arts, there were interviews with many of the artists as they went around the room and filmed the stories. And I would encourage you to go on to the website for the Dorchester Center and look at this full tape, it's amazing. One of the conversations I had that I really value was with one of the artists, Diantha Mitchell. She had painted um, a little girl. She had painted Ayana Stanley Jones, who was a seven-year-old who d was shot while sleeping in the bed with her grandmother. Well, my initial reaction to Diantha was, look at all the tragedy in this room. Diantha said, yes, that's true, but look more broadly. Look at the lives that were there to be celebrated and look at how those lives have brought those of us that are here tonight together, that have brought these projects together. Later in the week, Diantha had emailed Nancy Tankersley and I share these words with permission. Nancy, you have started a wave of healing and reconciliation and recovery here on the Eastern Shore. Whatever we must do, we must. Your choice to go forward with this project has given all of the artists and others a chance to look into the souls of those who were martyred and to bring out their best and to bring out our best. 
I've heard similar words shared about the feeling of creating the community art in Kent County. It is soul work, my friends. And that, I think, is the gift we're offered to explore today. So for the many ways that we bring forward our gifts, for the places of courage, we are grateful. May it be so.
So we're winding up our worship service today. And the question I would love to ask each of our artists and each of those who work through these art exhibits, and I'd like to ask how you sense you've been changed over these last weeks and months of working on these projects. And Lori, we're gonna start with you. Well, it's been an honor to take part in it. So I've felt very fortunate um, overall and that it, it's gained legs, you know, that more and more people are seeing this and, and taking part in it. So there's a, an excitement around that. Um, and uh, for me personally, I think it has been a heart opening um, and sensitizing experience overall to gain um, another perspective on the issue as a whole of you know, what's going on and, and what's happening in our current culture around it. So um, I am, I'm grateful that it's giving me another perspective and makes me wanna make more connection to, to reach out and take other actions. You know, some of them may be small and within my own family, we're talking more about it. Uh, so I, I, I just want to keep that going within myself. It's a growth experience. Absolutely. A lovely story of momentum and change. Sarah. I have to agree with Laurie. You know, I do think that, um, that it's, it, it's given me a chance to look at things differently and figure out way, new ways that I can share myself. And, um, and, and certainly it is a growth experience for sure. Um, it, for me, it was a little risk taking in that I'm not a portrait painter, I'm a landscape painter. And so I was very unsure about doing a portrait when, when Nancy first asked me, but I wanted to do it, but I was unsure about, can I pull this off? And can I do a portrait? But I wanted to do it very much. I wanted to be involved with it very much because I love the concept of it. So I just took the chance, and and it uh, it was a struggle to get it <laughs> to get it going. But I'm thrilled that I did it. Uh, and um, I would I would just say that it it changed me in ways that makes me look deeper as at what I can share with others. Thank you. And Nancy, this, this idea was born in a moment. Where are you? It, how have you been changed? And how is the evolution of the project feeling to you? Uh, it, it, has, it has changed me and it has started me on a, a journey. Um, you know, it was first uh, conceived as an attempt to just do something. Uh, but along the way, um, it has made me... Uh, open my heart and my mind to how much I have to learn. Uh, it, this is not an exhibit about police brutality, but really about racism and how it affects our actions and uh, reaps injustice for others. Um, I started reading some of Martin Luther King's quotes and I, I, I came one that really resonated with me. And, uh, he says, it's quite a long quote, so I won't read it all, but he says that um, shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. So I have vowed to be silent no more. So. Thank you all so much. Thank you for being collaborators on this service and for your art and for your vulnerability. Thank you. So John, I ask you now, how is the work, how is this work in community art, specifically the Tapestry Project, how is that changing you? Has there been anything that surprised you? Um, yeah, there definitely has. <laughs> I, um, I am a weaver myself. You can probably see my loom in the background. Um, 
it, it was an important way to express um, a community art project through weaving and what weaving means. Um, but more than that, I've used the last couple of months to do some deep dive into what is what is the role of art in um, in sort of conflict resolution and peace studies. Um, and it's taken me in a whole different direction from undergraduate school through graduate school into this new frame of study and um, you know what what role really does the art play do the arts play at the table of the important conversations that are happening in civic and social settings so so a deeper dive and 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 analyzing from not just analyzing but feeling a lot from there and and trying to see where it will guide me in my own professional and personal career. Mariah, I'd love to ask you the same question. How do you sense you are being changed? What are the risks and all? How does that all flow together for you? Um, honestly, I, I think some of my answer is really uh, similar to John's. Um, the, the process that I have um, both witnessed and been part of in the last three months of um, helping and maybe um, sort of being, I, I, I don't know, a vessel, I guess, of some kind for, for these conversations that are happening in Chestertown. Um, in many ways, it's really restored some hope and encouragement inside me because, um, you know, I've, I've seen people who are willing to listen. I've seen people who have changed their minds, um, people who opposed the mural at first and then, um, and then changed their mind and became huge supporters. And uh, so that, that has kind of restored some faith for me in, in those kind of processes and those, um, those, conversations and and the willingness of humans to be open and listen to each other and um and the other thing for me is is the relationships that i have um found myself opening to and and being welcomed into in new ways um because some creating something especially creating something with other people um taps into a, a different part of, of our minds, I think, in our hearts than, than creating something alone or, um, I don't know, not creating at all, which <laughs> I've found a lot of people in, in this pandemic period have had a hard time um, finding that the motivation or, or the inspiration. I think that's been tough for some people. And, and so, um, this process has opened me up and I hope a lot of other people as well. Great. Well, listen, I want to thank everyone who was open being interviewed today as we now enter a time of reflection, a time of centering. So thank you. And we now move to Sarah Poli offering us our time of meditation today. I invite us now into a period of reflection. I offer today the poem Human Family by Maya Angelou. I note the obvious differences in the human family. Some are serious and some thrive on comedy. Some declare their lives are lived in true profundity and others claim they really live the real reality. The variety of our skin tones can confuse, bemuse the light. Brown, pink, beige, purple, tan, blue, white. I've sailed across the seven seas and stopped in every land. I've seen the wonders of the world, not one common man. I know 10,000 women named Jane or Mary Jane, but I have not seen any two who are really the same. Mirror twins are different, although their features jibe. 
and lovers think quite different thoughts when lying side by side. We love and lose in China. We weep on England's moors and laugh and moan in Guinea and thrive on Spanish shores. We seek success in Finland and born and die in Maine. In minor ways we differ, in major we are the same. I note the obvious differences between each sort and type, but we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. Yes, we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. We are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. Let's take a moment and reflect on those words from Maya Angelou. Take a moment and hold your own joys, your own places of sorrow, any milestones you've gone through this past week, past months. For all our lives, for the many ways we come together in love, we are grateful. Amen. So we're coming to the end of our service. And I want to close for the many ways that we are refreshed, that we find renewal in each new day. I want to close in gratitude for our sources of inspiration, those things that anything that helps us imagine what might be and then gives us the courage to move for forward to that vision we close in the energy, the energy of shared hope, the energy that comes in our work of co-creating this world. May we leave today with open hearts and ready hands to do the work we are each called to do. So until we meet again, go in peace, go in love, Go knowing love surrounds you wherever you may go. Gotta dance with the spirit.